to cannot attend and I'm going to share my screen. And so in the course, um, I did put, as I mentioned to you um, on Tuesday, I did put in the announcements the document about which distribution should I use. And again, that gives you kind of an outline of all the different hypothesis tests, parametric and non-parametric that we've talked about and gives you an idea of kind of what kind of data you should ha would have if you're going to have you know what kind of question is it going to be about a mean or is it about a proportion and so I think that may help you make a decision about um, which hypothesis test to use and again that's going to benefit you because when you go to do the final exam problems are going to be all jumbled together and so you have to kind of decide which hypothesis test you're going to do. In fact, that's one of the questions that say it, it'll ask you which test are you going to do. Um, and so I've set up under assessments and quizzes, there is a final exam review. And so I hope between maybe today and the class on November the 29th, you can perhaps take a look at that and um, well, then we can have that discussion um, the last two days of class on the 29th of November and then on December 1st um, and get you prepared for the final exam. So do you have any questions about chi-square goodness of fit, which was our last discussion um, before we get into today's lesson? It's actually interesting and it kind of uh, surprised me. So I did a little bit further research. We're going to be talking about chi-square test of independence and also chi-square homogeneity today. But the commands in Minitab are the same for both tests, which kind of troubled me a little bit. And so I went back and 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 did some more research and studying on chi-square test of independence and test of homogeneity. It is two different tests, but the manner in which your test statistic, which is chi-square, is calculated is the same for both tests. Because for both test of independence and test of homogeneity, you usually have your data presented in a contingency table or a two-way table like we talked about earlier in the semester. The difference is even though the statistic is calculated in the same manner, it's the way that you're, the question being asked um, which affects your hypothesis which then ultimately also affects your conclusion that is different between the two because you have different information that's being analyzed. So I don't want you to be caught off guard by that because it did kind of catch me off guard Tuesday night when I was talking about this with the Business 3000 class. So let's talk about chi-square test of independence first. It is a hypothesis test. And again, we're focusing on with chi-square, whether we're looking at goodness of fit, test of independence, or test of homogeneity, our focus excuse me, is on qualitative data. So with qualitative data, we want to determine if two independent or two, excuse me, two qualitative variables are independent of each other or if they are somehow related to one another. And the idea of being related, we would say they are dependent upon each other. But the, the deal is with, with the chi-square test of independence, you're only going to select a single sample. And the difference you'll see in a little bit when we talk about homogeneity is that you have two samples from two different populations. So that's kind of the difference. It's sort of like if you want to think about it, the difference between having one mean and the difference between having two means or one proportion and two proportions. Excuse me. So 
the test of independence, we're going to look at two qualitative variables. Remember, qualitative variables are going to be words or phrases. And we're going to look to see, are they independent or is there some kind of connection between the two related to each other? And I talked too long, so it has hung itself up. Okay, let me go back and share my screen again. Okay, so typically with chi-square for test of independence, you'll have maybe two different survey questions. Remember with chi-square good as a fit, we only had one survey question. With a test of independence, you have two qualitative survey questions, which means you could have something like yes, no, agree, disagree, or and then maybe also consider gender. Um, so you have two qualitative variables and the data is organized into a two way or a contingency table. Some examples. We could say, is the stop smoking method independent of success, whether or not you quit smoking? So we could look at the different methods, you know, whether a person uses, you know, the nicotine patch, gum, uh, nicotine gum, hypnosis, and then whether they quit smoking or not. So that would be like a yes, no. Is there racial profiling? Is being stopped by police independent of race or ethnicity? So we would look at race and ethnicity and then whether or not somebody was stopped by the police. So again, you would have kind of that yes, no situation. Is alcohol consumption related to gender? Is a person's place of resident dependent upon the number of years of college? Is the type pet owned dependent on annual household income? Notice that a lot of the questions, the way the questions are worded, a lot of them have either the word independent or dependent within it. And so that kind of is helpful in identifying that you're probably going to do chi-square test of independence. The other key thing that you can notice here about it is that um, again you have the two qualitative variables and oftentimes again your data is presented in um, the contingency table format and I'm sorry my eyes are watering so I'm having trouble seeing <laughs> okay so let's see the null hypothesis, the way you state the null hypothesis for the chi-square test of independence is you would simply state that the two variables are independent. So we would say um, the stop smoking technique is independent of whether a person stops smoking or um, that the uh, race and ethnicity is independent of whether you are stopped by a police officer. Okay, so we'd say the two variables are independent. And the alternative is that they're dependent. And guys, those are the real, the only two options. Okay, there's nothing fancy about it. We're either going to say they're independent or they're dependent. The independent word goes in the null. The dependent goes in the alternative. I do give you the mini tab instructions. They, they seem a little weird because you do have to enter the contingency table. And so we'll take a look at how to do that together as we look at an example. But I do have the instructions there for mini tab. So I want us to go over and look at an example. It's the same hypothesis testing process that we've been doing for most of the second half of the course. So I'm going to go over to Microsoft Word to our example. And really, example number that's number three and number four are um, 
chi-squared test of independence. I'm going to actually do problem four to start with. And here's what I want to do. I want to do one example of test of independence. And then I want us to talk about the test of homogeneity. And I want to do one example for that because I want to make sure that we get the information covered. And then if we have time, we'll come back and look at additional examples. So I'm going to actually start with question number four. And it reads, many people believe that criminals who plead guilty tend to get lighter sentences than those who are convicted in trials. The table below summarizes randomly selected defendants in burglary cases for Atlanta. All of the defendants had prior sentence, prior prison sentences. At the 0.05 significance level, test the claim that the sentence, whether they're sent to prison or not, is independent of the plea. If you were an attorney defending a guilty defendant, would these results suggest that you should encourage a guilty plea? So again, you really have two questions going on here. You have the question of, did they plead guilty or not? And then you have the question of, did they go to prison or not? So you have two questions, but you have one sample. And it would be the group of randomly selected defendants. Now, just to point it out, they make this comment that all the defendants had prior prison sentences. That lets you know that in a sense, your, your sample, they have that same characteristic. It's not that some of them had a prior record and some of them didn't. Okay, that's not coming into play because they were all basically on the same level field in that they had had prior sentences. It doesn't affect how you work the problem, but I just wanted to point that out to you. Again, hopefully, because of the way the hypothesis is stated, it says test the claim that the sentence is independent of the plea is a clue that you're going to do chi-square test of independence. I don't recall any other of our hypothesis tests using that phrasing, and also the fact that your data is given in this table or two-way table could be the other big clue and the fact that you have qualitative data and frequency counts as the data is the other big clue. So we would begin as we always do with any hypothesis test and we state the hypotheses. You have the null and you have the alternative. And honestly, the sentence that I have highlighted in green, which is our hypothesis because it says test the claim and it says is independent. Okay, independent goes in the null based on what I told you earlier. The null gives you that idea that they're equal, um, they have, they don't have anything in common, that kind of thing. So we would say, and we could really write that sentence, the sentence, whether or not they went to prison, is independent of the plea. If that is our null, and the word independent always goes in the null, then the alternative would be that the sentence is dependent of plea, which implies there's some sort of connection or possible relationship there, that they're related to one another. 
step two of the hypothesis testing process is to identify the players. And again, the information or the players that we need for chi-square um, test of independence is the contingency table. And of course, our level of significance, which it tells us in the problem is 0.05, which means our confidence level is 95%. None of that's changed. Okay, then step three, as always, is to calculate, whoops, spelled that wrong. Calculate the test statistic, which again, in this case, the test statistic is chi-square and is p-value. Now again, we're not doing that by hand, okay? You would use Minitab to do that. And we know to do anything, we have to enter the data. The data for this problem is the frequency counts that are presented in the um, contingency table. So basically, we've got to recreate this table in Minitab. Okay. And then again, the instructions are on the PowerPoint, but they may seem a little odd when you look at them. Okay, so I'm going to try to walk you through as soon as my mini tab comes up. It's thinking about it really hard. Okay, so we got to enter the contingency table. And so in the first column, we're going to put the row categories. So I have basically the sentence and it's a, um, are sent to prison or they're not sent to prison. Those are the row categories. So again, just to kind of help you understand the mini tab instructions, it says enter the row categories in column one or in the first available column. So that's what I've done. Then I'm going to have separate columns for the column headers. So we have whether they had a guilty plea, or a not guilty plea. Okay, and then I enter the corresponding numbers. There were 392 that were sent to prison and had made a guilty plea. There were 564 who had a guilty plea and weren't sent to prison. 58 sent to prison and they had a not guilty plea. 14 that were not guilty and not sent to prison. So that when you're finished, it looks pretty much like the contingency table with the exception that you have the word sentence indicating what you have on the rows. All right, so then we go, once you get that entered, that's your data. We go to stat tables because we just entered our table of information and we use the command chi-square test of association. You got test of independence. We also have test of homogeneity. So Minitab uses the term test of association. We have summarized data in a two-way table. It asks for the columns 
that have the data. So I choose those. My rows, the names of my rows were the sentence and the columns were the plea. And I have to actually type the word plea in because I don't have another column to select. And then I click OK. This is going to look pretty funky when you see it. OK, they give you this table. And let's talk about this table for just a minute. You don't you don't really necessarily need anything from this table, but just so you don't kind of freak out when you see it. Come on. Okay, it looks kind of weird. Okay. But it tells us that we have the sentence in the rows and the plea is in the columns. The pieces that I'm highlighting in green were the original um, contingency table. Well, a couple of things that Minitab has done, okay, first of all, it has totaled, whoops, Minitab has totaled the columns and the rows. So I can see that 450 um, defendants total were sent to prison and 578 were not out of a total of 1,028 defendants. You also have your totals for each column and you have the grand total. The other piece that you have here under each frequency, you'll see another number. That is the expected. Now we didn't talk about how to calculate the expected. You don't need to know how to calculate the expected because Minitab is doing it for you. But these values are the expected. If the values are independent, this is what we would expect. If we assume the null hypothesis is true, okay, meaning that the two variables are independent, that's what we should expect. And again, what chi-square test of independence is doing behind the scenes for us is it's comparing the actual observed frequencies to what would be expected. Okay, and again, I didn't show you how to calculate those. Minitab's going to do it for you. You don't even really need those because Minitab also calculates your chi-square test statistic, which is what you really need. But again, you get so much information there. I wanted you to understand what you were getting. But if we look at our chi-square, okay, test statistic that we have, we're going to read the one for Pearson, okay, we're going to read the one for Pearson, and so we get a value, which we write down, our chi-square, is 42.557, our p-value is zero. Then we move on to step four. Step four is the same step that we always have and we make a decision.
We always make a decision using the technique of comparing the p-value to the level of significance. That hasn't changed. We're still going to do that. The p-value comes from mini tab, which was zero. Okay, so I have 0, 0.000 compared to the significance level of 0 0.05. We compare digit for digit, 0 to 0, 0 to 5. 0 is less than 5, so the p-value is less than or equal to the level of significance. When the p-value is less than or equal to the level of significance, we reject the null. And so step five is to write a conclusion. Go back up here and let's think about what this means. If we reject the null, that means the null is false and the alternative is true, which means in this scenario, based on the evidence we have, the sentence is dependent uh, on or of the plea. So we would say at the 0 0.05 level of significance, the sentence is dependent of the plea. Okay, so we're saying that there's some sort of relationship between whether or not the defendant pleads guilty or not guilty um, and the sentence that they receive. There's some sort of relationship. We don't necessarily know what that relationship is, but we know that a relationship exists. And so then this particular question asks a follow-up question. It says, if you were an attorney defending a guilty defendant, would these suggest results suggest that you should encourage a guilty plea? Personally, I would think so because we have indicated there is some relationship between whether they plea and whether they're sent to prison or not. And so since there is that relationship, it seems like you have better chance um, if you plead guilty, if you know that your defendant is guilty. Does anybody disagree? Okay, again, that's only one example and I will come back and do another one, but I wanna go ahead and talk about test of homogeneity so that hopefully you can see the differences, but also to ensure that you see or have this information related to this particular topic. So we're gonna talk for a minute about test of homogeneity. It's still a hypothesis test, and as I mentioned earlier, the formula for calculating the test statistic for the test of independence is the same as the test of homogeneity. Again, we're looking at the relationship between the observed values and what we would expect. The different piece with test of homogeneity is you have um, samples that are selected from 
different populations. So maybe you want to compare um, male to female. Maybe you want to um, look at um, different political parties. So you could do Democrat, um, Republican, Independent. Um, maybe you want to look at um, even age brackets. You could do 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and so forth. So you're looking at samples taken from different populations and you want to determine if the proportions of a common characteristic are the same for each group or each sample. You know, does, uh, you know, do, do females and males uh, have prefer, both prefer chocolate in the same proportion? Are the proportions the same? You know, do, or does, you know, females like chocolate better than males, that kind of, that thing. Or uh, I've got some other examples listed here, but you're looking at, again, kind of one survey question, but you have two different populations or two different samples from two different populations. It's a single survey question given to two different populations. So you're collecting the same information but from multiple groups. So for example, is the proportions of a D agree, disagree um, the same for men and women? If you're asking a survey question, would you get the same proportion of agree, disagree from both men and women? Um, are the checkout scanner error rates the same for regular priced items and advertised sale items. So we're looking at sale items and regular priced items and our focus is on the error rate. So you've got one survey question, two different groups or two different populations. Have the proportions of workers for various jobs changed during the past 10 years? Is the proportions of customers who make a list before going to the store the same for three different Kroger locations? So you survey people at each location. Okay, so again, a couple of things. You're thinking about proportions, but you're also thinking about two different groups. So you're comparing those two groups together and focusing on whether they are the same or different. Homogeneity, the idea of homogeneous, means they have the same characteristics. The prefix H-O-M-O -O means same. So the null hypothesis for the chi-square test of homogeneity indicates that the populations, the two populations, men and women, follow the same distribution. The alternative would then be that they do not follow the same distribution. Okay, so it's either follow or does not follow, equal and not equal. Again, the keystrokes for calculating the test of homogeneity is the same is the same as we had for test of independence. What's different is the type data you have how, and then um, how the question is worded. Okay, so let's go out and take a look at an example. And we're gonna look at example number five. We're gonna look at example number five. You want to know if there is any difference in distributions among political affiliation as it applies to gun control. You take separate samples of the Democrat population, the independent population, and the Republican population, and you have the results summarized in the table. So your survey question is, 
you know, do you believe in gun control? So that was your one survey question. And you asked that group, asked three different groups that question. You asked some folks who were Democrats. You had some folks that were independent. And then finally, others who were Republican. Okay, so again, when you start this process, it's the same process that we've been talking about all along. You have to state the hypotheses. So you have the null and you have the alternative. In this scenario, again, the null will imply equal. The alternative will imply not equal. And so we're saying that the proportions of Democrats, independents, and Republicans basically are the same. Okay. Again, go back to the PowerPoint if you want to and look how we had those worded. Keep losing my mouse. Okay, we say the populations, so that means uh, Democrat, Independent, and Republican follow the same distribution. And so you could just write it that way instead of having to write them all out. You could say the populations, you could be specific, you could say the three populations follow the same distribution. Now notice, I don't know what distribution that is. I don't know that it's normal. I don't know that it's, you know, skewed left or skewed right. I'm just saying that the, all three, excuse me, follow the same distribution, whatever that distribution may be. The alternative then would be, um, the three populations do not follow the same distribution. The second step is to identify the players, which again, in this scenario, the data is given in a contingency table format. So the table becomes your data. And then we need our alpha. It looks like it does. It didn't give us one. So typically when they don't give us one, that leaves the researcher free to choose whether they want to use 0.05 or maybe 0.01. Um, I'm going to say let's use 0.05, which means the confidence level is 95%. Step two, or step three, excuse me, is to calculate the test statistic, which again, the test statistic is going to be chi-square and its p-value. And again, we're going to use Minitab to do that. And again, it's the same set up as we had for test of independence but the question is different it's a different question but the formula is the same that's used to calculate the test statistic for both test of independence and test of homogeneity excuse me goodness gracious all right so i'm going to get a new worksheet so we can enter our 
data. Okay, so in the first column, we have their response. To whether or not they believe in gun control and they either say yes or no. So I put in my row categories, then I have separate columns for my groups. So we have Democrat, Independent, and Republican. And then we enter the numbers. Okay, so again, when you're finished, it looks as though you have the contingency table in the spreadsheet in Minitab. Any questions about how to get that entered? Because it's a little bit different from the way we normally enter data. All right, then we go through the same keystrokes again. We go stat, tables, chi-squared test for association. We do have summarized data in a two-way table. My columns are Democrat, Republican, and Independent. My rows, um, are the gun control response, the columns are the political party, and I click OK. And again, you get the same results that you got previously. Again, you get this nice, big, weird-looking table. And again, what you have in the green is the original contingency table. Again, what Minitab has done, they've totaled your rows and columns so that you can see there were 45 total who were said yes. There were 58 total who said no. We also have the totals on the vertical and you have the grand total. Furthermore, the numbers underneath each frequency is your expected frequency for that group. Again, what you would expect if the data do both come from or follow the same distribution. Okay. Again, we don't really need that information. What you do need is your chi-square test. And again, even for this chi-square test, you read the Pearson. Let's see if I can get it up here where it'll let me paste it. Otherwise, it's going to paste it in some place weird. I'm supposed to paste it down here. Okay. Again, for the even the chi-square test of homogeneity, you're going to read the Pearson. So my test statistic, which is chi squared, is 19.973 
the corresponding p-value is zero. We need to then do step four, which is make a decision. Can you make your decision as always by comparing the p-value to the level of significance. The p-value, which comes from any tab, is zero. The level of significance, which we decided to use, was 0.05. Make the comparison, digit for digit, zero to zero, zero to five. Zero is less than five. P is less than or equal to the level of significance. When the p-value is less than or equal to the level of significance, we reject the null. So if we reject the null, that means the null is false and the alternative is true. Okay, so this tells us that the three distributions do not follow the same distribution. Again, it doesn't tell us which one of the three are different, but it does tell us that there is a difference and there would be another test for us to do. So we would say at the 0.05 level of significance, the populations do not follow the same distribution. And again, there are other tests we could do from that point to determine which one is different. They're probably, we don't necessarily look at them. I was gonna say there's probably graphs here, but I don't think it, it doesn't give you any graphs to look at, okay? But there are probably some we could create and look at and begin to think about, you know, is it the Democrat, the Republican, or independents who support gun control more so than the others. But all we know is that they do not follow the same distribution. Questions? Okay, do you want to see another example of each, I might have time to do two more. I don't know, we'll have to see. Or do you feel okay? So when you said we could do other graphs, like you could just put this in and kind of graph it and say, I mean, can you come to the conclusion or should you not come to the conclusion that Republicans, you know, are do not favor I know you can say that that the there is a, a significant difference, but you can't say Republicans are more um, do not favor gun control more, or should you not? I'm surprised that Minitab doesn't give us those. Let's see, uh -huh. there might be some options that because I didn't choose, like in the in the statistic. I just wonder yeah, that's what I'm thinking. We might could uh, look at there's some things called residuals or even each sales contribution to the chi square. That might give us a graph. Let's see if it does. No, it just gives us numbers. Okay. So 
but if we looked at the graph, because I know on some on the uh, cost square goodness of fit, sometimes it gives us a graph to kind of compare the two. So, you know, when you start looking at mm -hmm. this, you know, it, it kind of seems like this is really, you know, the fact that Republicans do not seem to support gun control. Is mm -hmm. that what I'm saying? You know, because there's right. five and it really should be 15. Yes. But most of that, so that seems like that's, you know, that would be where I would start. But again, at this point, you would have to start comparing, you know, one to one. You know, you'd right. have to do Democrat to independent and and maybe focus just on the yes. So there are other tests. We don't we're not going to go that far. But yeah, there's other tests. But but at least this tells us that there does appear that they come from different populations. You know, so there's a difference in this case, probably from their points of view. And then we'd have to start doing one. Another question, if you were if you were, say, reporting this, if you're reporting this to, um, you know, just reporting this out, like, say, yeah. reporting this as a as something that you discovered, would you would you mention the test that you ran and would you mention the chi square value? I mean, it doesn't like the um, those tests statistics we always include them you know we, right. we include them research but is that something that you would say mention or would you just say you know we we can see statistically that there's a difference if you're writing something say for a general audience if you're writing for a general audience you probably would just say that you know based on the statistical analysis you probably would not mention which one you did because most people yeah. just in general would not be familiar with the chi-square test of homogeneity or test of independence right. or whatever and so you wouldn't necessarily mention that and you probably wouldn't even list the statistic or the p-value you would just report your you know you could display your original contingency table or you could even do the one that many tab creates where it shows the expectations to kind of let them draw uh -huh. their own conclusions but you right. For a general audience, you probably would not report what test or even the test statistic or the p-value because, again, in general, the public itself is not going to be able to understand that. Now, if you're reporting it, you know, writing for a statistical journal or like in your case sure. where you're re reporting out something, you know, to somebody who knows the statistics, who can understand the statistics, then, yeah, you want to report all that stuff. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Ainsley, do you or Naomi have a question? Do you all, we've got about uh, 19 minutes left. Do you want to see another example or do you feel okay? I feel like the biggest thing here is getting getting that data typed in correctly. And the rest of it kind of falls out for you because it's pretty straightforward. I don't have any questions. Naomi, are you okay? Jeannie, do you feel like you need to see another example or are y'all okay? I think I'm okay. Um, it would be interesting to see like how the raw, you know, what the, I don't know if you have an example. Well, there, well let me show you what you can do with raw data because you, you're probably gonna have to do that on your project anyways, because you probably have your raw data. So like for yours, you're doing, um, You've got the gray. You have the the school stuff, right? Generally, yeah. What I'm looking at specifically right now is a survey, and then um, students. I'd like to look at uh, students who responded to the survey versus students who didn't respond to the survey, and which ones have enrollment is a huge thing. So, which ones have enrolled and which ones haven't enrolled? Well, you could almost do a test for independence because you've got one population uh -huh. right and you're asking the question uh -huh. did they respond to the survey or not respond mm -hmm. okay so that's one question and that's a yes no and then you're asking um is the other thing you're looking at whether they enrolled or not Right, whether they enrolled since then. This is this is a, a population that wasn't enrolled at a certain point in time. 
you know, and then yeah. looking at them at the end of a certain point in time, have they enrolled, have they not enrolled in, in the difference between them? To me, you're almost looking at that chi-square test of independence because you're looking at two questions. Mm -hmm. Did they respond to the survey or not? So that's a yes, no. And then did they later enroll or not enroll? Okay. So that's a test of independence. So is there, I mean, all that's going to tell you is that either answering the survey and enrolling um, are independent or dependent of each other, but then that shows you there's a relationship. Maybe the fact that you reached out via the survey prompted them to enroll maybe? Yeah, that, that would be like, I just want to caution that maybe survey results are yeah. skewed towards, towards students who might be um, predisposed to enroll. Yeah, you know? yeah, that would be the only thing. But you, I think you could run a test for independence. But if you've got, let me see if I can pull in real quick a data set to show you guys how it works for raw data. Because Minitab will, I think, go ahead and do... Um, the um will will actually create the tables for you. I'm trying to find one that maybe is not one that y'all have done. Okay, here's class surveys, the class survey that I've used for other classes where I had you people answer questions. So if we wanted to maybe see we need two qualitative variables, is there like a relationship between, um, I believe I had all online. Yep, so can't use online. But we have maybe between their pathway and their county of residence. You know, is there a relationship there? So if we wanted to test for mm -hmm. homogeneity, for example, or in either independence, you know, is the pathway independent of county of residence or yeah, we have to do it that way. Have to be test of independence. Okay, so you got you the raw data. Oh, y'all can't see my screen. Yeah, could you share your screen? I'm sorry. Thank no, that's you. Right. Okay, so this is a survey where um, that I usually ask my students at the beginning of the semester, and um, just to collect some data, and then we use those in examples in class and different things. So if we ask the question, you know, is um, the pathway independent of the county of residence. I don't have that nice, neat little table, but what I have are the actual responses from the students. And so I can have Minitab go ahead and create that table for me. We still use our Chi-Square Test for Association but we use it as raw data. And I tell it, okay, I want the pathway to be the rows and the columns to be the county of residence. It doesn't matter which way you set it up. Okay. You could you could flip flop it. It's okay. And click okay. And mini tab goes to work and it determines the um, actual observed. So if you're looking at this table, this top number would be there were five students in Bartow County who were business administration majors. Or there were two students from Cherokee County who were business administration. The second number would be what we would expect. And the third number was something I clicked while ago and I didn't turn it off when we were trying to look at something. So let me redo it. Okay, so that's a little cleaner. So the top row, the top one gives you the reality, the observed, and the bottom one gives you um, the expected. So it does it automatically for you and it still calculates your chi-square. My chi-square test here was 50.408. Now it looks like it didn't give me my test of a, my p-value. Um, it says it's probably invalid. 
And the reason it says it's probably invalid is because so many of these had a, an expected value below five. Remember, one of the conditions for using um, chi-square was that your expected value was five or higher. And so I've got a lot where it's not. So, you know, the, even though I run the test and I, I can run the test, it's not valid. And so I could report that, but it would seem apparent that there's not a relationship between pathway and county of residence. And I wouldn't expect there to be. Right. And you could also kind of do some data cleanup and like to maybe yeah. take your top 10 counties or something yeah. like that. Yeah, you could do or that top too. 10, top 10 um, counties, top 10 um, yeah. pathways. Yeah. And try to try them like that just to, to see if there's more. Yeah, of a, but I, I point that out the way that you do it with the raw data because when you go to do your project, you're going to have the raw data. But again, MeanTab right. does everything. And, you know, it doesn't matter which one I choose for rows and which one I choose for columns. And even if you're doing goodness of fit, you know, if I wanted to say that, you know, the counties were all are equally distributed, you know, we have the same number of students across counties. Well, my observed counts, let's see, can I do chi squared that way? I got to have numbers. So let's see. No. Okay, something's going on. Hold on. Because if I go stat, tables, chi-square, it's still asking me for the observed. Oh, I need to tell it I got categorical data. That's it. I got to tell it I've got categorical data because I don't have the observed counts. Minitab is going to have to do that for me. So if I say, okay, my county of residence, and I want equal proportions across the board. Again, it's going to do all the work behind me and it's going to tell me, you know, how many students there were from each county. What should I expect if they're all equal? And then obviously they're not because my chi square value is 199. Here's the table that I was looking for a while ago. Oh, yeah, with it, the, yeah that's nice. So, and so because, you can actually look and see that. Yeah, see Barto that is. probably Bartow and Cobb. But you also would then have to put this in context. And the context is these students were either online students or they're physically on the Bartow campus. And so the fact that they're physically oh, okay. on the Bartow campus, you would expect to have a lot of Bartow students. Right. If I did the survey, Sometimes I've pulled in it from like all the all the campuses. I had all the instructors do it, and then you could could look at campus relationships. Right. So it can be done. You can do the test with raw data um, uh -huh. for our purposes in like your homeworks, your practice problems, uh, mid final exam. They're going to be in contingency table form, but it can be done with raw data. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, ladies? I say ladies because I think you're all females based on names. All right, so here's the plan. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week next week with Thanksgiving and fall break and then Thanksgiving break. Um, take some time out, have a little bit of uh, enjoyment and then but remember that quiz 12 is due on Sunday and then you have nothing due the following week and your project seven on Chi Square is due on December the 5th and the week after Thanksgiving, which will be November 29th when we meet, we're going to begin reviewing for the final. All right. Y'all have a good afternoon. I'll see you after Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, y'all. Have a Thanks. good week.